Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you. Welcome to our Christian Doctrines YouTube lecture, where we'll be tackling a certain doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventists, the nature of humanity. I am joined by my co-reporter and the one who prepared a PowerPoint presentation you are seeing on screen right now, Christina Vidal. She will give you the second half of the lecture following me. The source material of this lecture comes from the Seventh-day Adventist or official org website. The link to this specific lecture will be on the description box below. Before we start, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this unique opportunity to spread your word digitally to the people on the internet. I pray that you'll guide our lips so that we will be able to give justice to the glory of your words. I also pray for the viewers of this lecture video. Wherever they are, bless them always and keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Now the nature of humanity. Have you ever thought about why we act the way we do? How we come and choose the decisions we ought to make? You might have noticed already that in everything we do, even to the most mundane of tasks, we have to choose what we should do at that moment. How so? Let's go back to the start of it all. In Genesis 1 verse 26 to 28, we focus on the part where God first created mankind. Man and woman were created in the likeness of God, with their own uniqueness, power, and freedom to think and act however they pleased. Each of these, thought to be free beings, is an unbreakable union of body, mind, and spirit that is reliant on God for life, breath, and everything else. They were to rule over God's other creations, birds in the sky, the livestock, and all wild animals to fill the earth with life and beauty. When our ancestors rebelled against God, they renounced their reliance on Him and lost their high status. The image of God in them was marred and lost. They became subject to death. Their descendants share this fallen nature and its consequences. They were born with weaknesses and tendencies to sin. But God in Christ reconciled the world to Himself and by His Spirit restores in penitent mortals the image of their Maker. Created for the glory of God, they are called to love their environment, one another, and God. Let's have a peek at humanity's origins. The first step in understanding who we are as human beings is understanding where we came from. If we turn to the second chapter of Genesis, we get the full picture. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. This tells us a couple of things about human nature. First, we are created beings who owe our very existence to God. Second, we are unique individuals in that God was personally involved in the creation of humanity. God cared enough to make us unique individuals, each one infinitely precious to Him. He made us in His image. So what does it mean to be created in, in the image of God? Humans possess specific ca capabilities other living beings on earth do not. These characteristics are also qualities God expresses. We are created with consciousness. We not only sense our surroundings, we are also aware of them. We can pr process things voluntarily and make decisions based on the sensory information we take in. We were also made to be creative. God created the earth and gave us the ability to create things within the earth. Though God is the provider of every material he, we can use, He made us able to express, express ourselves through the work of our own hands. And most importantly, we were given the ability to choose. While no one can choose the life they are given, we can all choose what to do with what we are given. We can choose what we give our attention, our love, our allegiance. God didn't want us to be programmed to follow Him. That isn't love. He only wants our hearts if we are willing to give them to Him. Free agency, also more known as free will, is a key component of the nature of humanity. From the moment Adam and Eve were created, they had control of their own thoughts, actions, and desires. Genesis paints us a picture of what humanity was always meant to be. We were designed to be unique individuals with creative hearts and minds, endowed with the power to choose. We were designed to take care of this world and rule it kindly, become good stewards of this incredible planet God made for us. But most importantly, we were designed in God's image, meant to live in a loving relationship with Him. 
When they lived in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve walked and talked with God every day. They were the original family, living, the, living in perfect harmony with the loving God who created them. But something changed, something that shattered their relationship with God and brought unspeakable trouble upon the world. Trouble that has changed the nature of humanity ever since. Despite all the love God poured into giving humanity all of these great things, somehow humanity utilized the blessing of free will to lead them to the fall. My co-reporter Christina will give you the insights following this part. Thank you, Alora. So, how did humanity become corrupt? The answer lies in our ability to choose. It was the abuse of free will God granted us. When God first created perfect human beings, He gave them many gifts. The Garden of Eden was intended to bless humanity, and all the creatures were peaceful, and there were plants for food. But if He wanted His race of beings to truly love Him and accept love from Him, they must be able to choose Him, and in order to be able to choose Choices must exist. What was a deadly tree like this doing in Eden's paradise? The answer is that the existence of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was so humanity could learn to exercise their free will. The presence of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't a trap. It wasn't even much of a temptation since they had so many pleasing food options. But this tree showed that human beings were not God's slaves. It wasn't the fruit itself that corrupted Adam and Eve. It was the decision behind it. By disobeying God's command, Adam and Eve were claiming they didn't need him. Instead of trusting God knew what was best for them, their actions demonstrated that they knew what was best for themselves. And as soon as they discovered something they didn't yet know about, they just had to know it. They wanted to be like God. With that single decision, the stable connection between God and humanity was severed. Eating the fruit did exactly as the serpent said. Mankind learned what it actually meant to know both good and evil at the same time. Without a connection to God, humanity loses the perfection it once had. Mankind no longer resembles the God they were created to represent, and sin is left to have its way in the world. But even so, we know this isn't ultimately what we want, because I don't. No one truly wants evil, selfishness, and hate to rule the world. So is there a way to reclaim the perfection humanity once had? The thing is, God had already come up with a way to redeem us and restore the lost connection we once had with Him. He did this through His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only truly perfect person who has ever lived on this earth. By taking the punishment for our sins on the cross, Jesus provided His righteousness for all of us, restoring our relationship with God. All we can do is turn to the God who is perfect and accept the free gift of grace He offers us. Because God wants to be part of our lives. He wants us to accept His grace and live with Him in heaven. But first, we have to invite Him in. We have to make a daily choice to bring God into our lives so He can help us fight the selfish, sinful nature we all carry inside us. God is willing to create a new pure heart within us. He'll grant us the victory, and when He does, we'll be that much closer to our Heavenly Father and our eventual home with Him. As written in Romans 5 verse 10, 
Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We understand we can never cure our sin on our own, so we seek out Christ the one and only answer to our broken nature. He is ready and waiting to repair our damaged relationship and lead us back to Him. And that is it, my friends. Thank you for giving us your time and for listening to this very meaningful doctrine. We all know that we have instances in our lives where our human nature keeps us from being on the right path. But I hope and pray that every one of us, through Jesus Christ, will be able to track our individual unique journeys well as He leads us to that right path. Please leave a comment down below. Give us your ideas about humanity's gift, free will. Again, thank you, have a great life, and God bless you.